My name is Chris, and I'm with... Mono and Te Reme. No, Mono, I have to say, um, you're an actor, right? How long have you been acting for? I've been acting for, uh, professionally, uh, well, I've been acting since I was a kid, but professionally since I was uh, 17 years old, I moved out uh, to Hollywood after I graduated high school. Okay, so who are your inspirations as far as acting? How did you, why did you want to start acting for? When I was four years old, I saw a production of Peter Pan at a, a local theater in McCall, Idaho. And um, pretty much ever since then, I, I remember, four, it was either four or five, and I, I saw the actors start flying around on the stage. And I remember, to this day, I'm 39, I remember thinking, I want to do that. And so every place we moved when I was a kid, I would get involved in community theater. And my parents would never move me out to LA, LA even though I was begging them to. Uh, and finally, so when, when I had the opportunity at 17, I was doing a, a play called Marvin's Room. And uh, it was, at the same time, it was being made into a film by uh, Robert De Niro and Leo DiCaprio. And uh, there was a manager in the audience, and she said, if you move to L.A., uh, I'll represent you. So I, I took off. And uh, at the same time, I, I saw Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction uh, when I was uh, 17. And I thought to myself, if this is the kind of cinema that's being made out there, I already was in love with acting. And I was like, I want to go be in movies. I have to be in movies. And, and uh, within four years, I was lucky enough to get on Star Trek Voyager. And it, it's all been uh, you know, pretty good since then. Right, right. What other TV shows have you been on besides Voyager? Um, all, with TV shows, uh, I was... Uh, also a regular on the final season of One Tree Hill. I played a character named Billy. And I've done guest spots on a, a million shows, uh, uh, 24 and Sabrina the Teenage Witch and JAG and Unhappily Ever After, uh, um, ER. Uh, oh, there's a bunch more. If you look up my IMDb, you'll see But there's a bunch more shows. I'm, I'm just missing a few. Right. So when you were on Star Trek, did... Um um, did, did you did your career get bigger after Star Trek? And I mean, what did you do after Star Trek? Yeah, after Star Trek, I I, I uh, did whatever it takes, which was a, a movie with Shane West and Aaron Paul and Ben Foster and Colin Hanks and those guys. Um, and I, start, I started hopping from movie to movie, and I, I didn't really want to do television again. I wanted to be a film star. And I think that at the time when I was I was really young, so I think at the time that probably hurt my career because I was uh, I sort of had too big of a head on my shoulders and, and thought I was bigger than I really was. And um, so around 25, uh, things started drying up, and I decided I was going to go play music. And I played music uh, for three years. I went to I gave up acting and I went to San Francisco and I, I played in a band. But the whole time I was there, I would watch a TV and I would see Ben Foster or Shane West or Colin Hanks or Aaron Paul or all my friends that I used to run with. Chris Evans plays Captain America now, you know, um, just all their careers blowing up. And I decided I was watching a jumbo jet fly over my head in Olympia, Washington, while we were playing a show for like 13 people. And I was like, and I was sleeping in the back of a van with my bandmates, and I was like, I'm going back to Hollywood. I'm going back to acting. So I moved back when I was 30, and uh, it's basically, you know, I'm 39 now. Things are going good again. I've done a, a bunch of films. I started producing films uh, when I was 30. I f did a film called Benjamin Troubles. I recently made a movie called Fifth Passenger. I'm working on a, a series right now on Kickstarter called The Circuit. Um, that we're gonna we're in development on. We're gonna probably be sh shooting in September. Now, what is what is the circuit all about? It's on Kickstarter, and it's being funded as we talk right now. But uh, how did you get involved with the circuit? Well, for 15 years after Star Trek Voyager, I would go out on the convention scene, the Star Trek convention scene, and the pop culture Comic Con scene. And what's neat about that is not only do you get to meet all these different cultures and people and, and see these different parts of the world but you find yourself in these really surreal situations when you where, where you're like sitting at a table at a dinner 
and across from you is Harry Potter, and then to his left is uh, Carrie Fisher, and Knight Riders on my right. You know, all these icons from childhood or movies that are on now, icons of today and yesterday and tomorrow, uh, all around you. Um, so I, I decided to just... And then you, you have a chance to hang out with them for the weekend, and you become friends. So I decided to come up with this series, which is 10 science fiction stories that all take place in this futuristic city called Urbiessa. And each episode will be a science fiction story, but will be a different subgenre of science fiction. So a lot like uh, there's a show called Black Mirror that's on right now. So it's a lot like Black Mirror, except with the Star Trek uh, sort of Roddenberry ethic of science fiction for stories that, that take a deep look at who we are as a culture, as a, as a society, as, as a species. Um, and it's a more positive spin on the world. And, on, and uh, I call it, you know, better art for a better tomorrow. Uh, I think science fiction has a, a way of breaking down people's prejudices and telling stories through metaphor that really affect people and they don't even know that they're affected by the story you've told. And so it's 10 science fiction stories, 10 subgenres, all standalone stories. It's an anthology series like Twilight Zone or Steven Spielberg's amazing stories. And it stars all these actors that I've met over the last 15 years. Uh, you know, Doug Jones from uh, Hellboy and, and uh, Silver Surfer. He played Abe Sapien in Hellboy. And a bunch of, I, I basically, we have star actors from every incarnation of Star Trek. Uh, Gigi Edgeley from Farscape. Uh, Ryan Eagle is going to direct an episode from The Blacklist and The Blacklist Redemption. Um, James Byrd, this incredible director, is signed on. Um, Rob Archer from Defiance and uh, Lost Girl and Pixels. Um, Tim Russ, Robert Beltran, uh, Ethan Phillips. Um, we have 23 actors, and with the all the actors that we've signed on right now, it's if you go to the Kickstarter site, if you just go to Kickstarter and type in The Circuit, Urbiessa, you'll see all the incredible talent. We've got, you know, Walter Koenig from the original Star Trek. Basically icons of science fiction and fantasy. Um, icons all the way to the young stars of today that are up and coming and making names for themselves right now. Right, so um, people can find out the, uh, the circuit on Kickstarter. Where else can they look at besides Kickstarter? Uh, they can go to at the circuit movie on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, you can also follow me personally at Monuente Reme on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or at Monuente Reme123 is my fan page on Facebook, but I, I personally run it. I don't have somebody running it for me. Um, so, uh, but at the Circuit Movie, you can also go to thecircuitfilm.com uh, and see a, a bunch of trailers about the film. And Kickstarter is the other place to find out. The Kickstarter page is really fun. It's interactive. So um, I, I highly suggest people go to the Kickstarter page because it gives people the, clear, the most clear look at exactly what this series is. Okay, right, okay. Everybody can follow you on your homepage and at the circuit and pretty much, um, you know, donate today too. It would help out um, him and Mono and the rest of the crew and so um, um, how much longer are you gonna have your Kickstarter going yeah we have 15 more days uh, and we've we've hit our s second stretch goal of seventy five thousand dollars and what's exciting is in uh, about four days ago a friend of mine told me that he would match funds with me for 200k if we could raise 200k so we have 15 days if we can raise another $120,000, if we can find people out there that believe in the power of science fiction, to uh, the power of conscious intellectual science fiction, bringing back Star Trek Roddenberry-esque ethics to science, big budget science fiction television, then we can match funds. That would give us close to half a million dollars. And then I have two 
undisclosed A-list actor friends that will sign on at that point, and that would allow us to basically raise three to five million plus. Uh, the sky's the limit, uh, and that would allow us to shoot the entire miniseries this year and it wouldn't just be a one episode uh, Kickstarter project anymore. It would be a whole mini series that would be on Netflix or Amazon or HBO or, or whatnot. So please uh, take a look at the project. And we only need about 700 more people to pledge for us to create this amazing science fiction anthology and to bring back, uh, you know, Roddenberry ethics to science fiction television, which I think has been something that's been missing from our culture for for a long time. Right, absolutely. So, all right, well, thank you very much. Thanks so much for the interview. I appreciate it. All right, and check out Mono, and his links will be down in the description down below. Thank you. Thanks, guys.